My client would like their logo on these two basketballs here. And that's what the logo looks like. Okay. Client I've done work for before. Uh, and what those, these will be used for is um, videos. So they're, they really just need to be last long enough to get through the video, somebody handling the ball, maybe making a couple of shots. So it's not, it's not like they're gonna be needed to be something that's just nuclear on there like the, like the Spalding logo. Just needs to last through a video segment or section or production. Um, so anyway, I've done these kinds of things before, but never a basketball. So um, my, there's lots of ways this could be done. Uh, one would be, you know, conforming vinyl that you could just apply onto it, uh, you know, and then heat it up, make sure it stays on. But, you know, we're talking about we got some pretty serious texture here um, with little nubs. So it's that's too iffy. I'd say if it was just going to sit there and nobody was going to touch it or do anything with it. Yeah, maybe. But it still wouldn't look really like it was you know, a part of the ball. It always kind of look a little bit, um, kind of like sitting on top. And also we need to match this color. So that would be another factor. Um, and so I have chosen to go with a, you know, just paint it with one shot. Uh, process blue is closest obviously, but I still, as you can see, have to lighten it up because that's a little brighter. I'll have to, so I have to do some color mixing to get to that blue. Um, so what I'm going to do then is make a pattern. Um, you can freehand it, but that's not going to look good enough in the 24th, 21st, 24th, 21st century. Um, it needs to look clean. Uh, there'll be some close-up shots of it, and then there'll be some distant shots of it. And somebody's going to be handling it and taking a couple of shots, things like that. And then the other thing is they got their logo on it. It'll last for a while. If they use it on a cord, it'll eventually wear off. But at least it'll be something cool they can keep for their own personal amusement. So anyway, what I'm planning on doing then is I'm going to make a pattern with a logo at size on my plotter using pen tool. And I always, uh, I always prime my pen before I put it in. Make sure it's running. It's, you know, it kind of gets a little dried at the tip. Put the receiver. Put my paper in. Like so. And then I increase the force. Go over here. Press go. Press cut. Oh, press roll. Pounce it. Guides for accurate placement. like to include a center line five inch logo two and a half clean the surfaces with isopropyl alcohol
lay out your pattern. Find a center, and you know what? What would have been smart is to um, I might be able to do this. But I was thinking of um, I sh with the pin tool. I should have drew these lines. These lines. I had them. I had them located. I had these seams located. I could have drawn those in and included them in the pattern, and then I could have just lined them up with those. I could have just lined them up with those. It would have been then. It would have been really accurate. I think what I'll do, <laughs> it's hard to hold these. Let me go like this. This is the packaging that came in. Hey, that holds it pretty good. I think what I'll do is I'll mark a center point with one of these. Um, one of these tapes. Do 13 and a half is 16 and three quarters, right? No, that's half. What's that? Half 13 and a half. Half a 13 and a half. Yeah, 16 and three quarters. Okay, so 16 and three quarters from here to here. Let's mark it right up here. Okay. Wow, ooh, their logo is not in the center. 13 and a half. Oh yeah, it is. It's an optical illusion. Let me double check, make sure I got this in the... Yeah, that's weird. That's what happens when you're working on a, a sphere. So that's there. And see how a stencil wouldn't work? You're just going to be bunching it all up like that. That ain't, that's not good. You can't just do a stencil and then spray it. That ain't going to work. You might be able to do a strip like this and a strip like that, but it's just, it's just, there's no way to get it perfect. There's no point in it. Um, ooh, I got to go up. So that's why I have my reference points here. I got, I got two, two points here, two points there to work with. So I'm not doing okay. I'm doing okay. Just got to get it in the center like that. What's nice about this, if it, isn't per if it isn't in the center, where you want it to be, you just clean it off, clean off the dust, and do it again. But see, I have these four corners that I can match with the seam, so that's going to help me a lot. So all I have to do is just be equal amounts of space off the seam on all four corners, and it should be good to go. Then you take white. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Do you want to move it? Trying to lock it in with my finger. And white chalk. Then you got a lot of excess, so you gotta blow it off. But I'm gonna blow it off outside of the shop. And then I should have pounced it. I should have pounced it outside the shop in my dirty room. So I don't like this stuff blowing all over the place. And it's there. There it is. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a little low in it. Yeah, so that's a little low. See how the see how the lettering is a little too low? I'm gonna raise that up. So I'm gonna clean that off, reposition it and get it in the right position. Okay, I got it. it. Took a few tries because these aren't really uniformed. These bands are not uniform. They're kind of wobbly and not perfectly straight. So I just had to get it on there as close as I could by, by eyeing it in there. I just, I just lined it up with the Spalding logo in the center. Um, I think that'll work. And use um, a good quality Gilders pounce powder and don't just use baby powder and whatnot or chalk powder uh this is this i'll put a link of this for this powder 
Uh, it's really specifically used for the sign industry. It's real, it's real, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's consistency is very, it's powdery, but it's also very, it, it adheres really well. You know, it kind of, kind of builds up a little bit. It doesn't just go on there like real light, like as you can see, it's gone on there really heavy. It looks good. It looks almost looks like I drew it on with a pencil. So now for the skill part of the process. And this is where we're going to brush on our primer first. And I highly recommend primer. I know there's a temptation to just go ahead and mix this light blue and paint it on there, but I guarantee that it's not going to look good enough. <laughs> Even though we might say there, that's good enough. It, it'll look a lot better with stain blocking primer like this first and um, then put the top coat on top of that. It'll just really super pop. Otherwise, it's gonna be a little bit muted. So I'm gonna use my trusty Kafka number one quill, and I've already, as you can see, lettered one ball so I can kinda get my head in the game and be a little bit more relaxed and talk while I'm painting the second ball. Um, so since I have already painted one ball and used this primer, which is a very fast, drying primer, I'm going to have to completely clean my brush of the primer with some lacquer thinner. And people say don't use lacquer thinner because it's hard on the brushes. But the creator of the brush, Steve Kafka, recommends using lacquer thinner. So therefore I use lacquer thinner. And then I just take a little bit of this paint, I mean the primer, in a cup with a little reducer and I've already put reduce in here, but it is a warm day. And like I said, this stuff, this stuff doesn't mess around. It dries fast. In fact, that's already dry. I just finished it. That one's already dry. So literally I could be top coating that right now. That's how fast it dries. So I get this to a dribble consistency. Could, don't want it too much. Otherwise it's gonna start dripping down the ball and that's a big no-no. We don't wanna have, we don't wanna go through that kind of kind of a hassle. Um, I also went ahead and printed out a version of it as well, just to, as reference. I didn't, I didn't use it um, on the first ball. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not sure, I probably won't use it on this one. Um, but this is where our lettering skills come in handy if we've got lettering skills, brush skills. And um, just following the line that we have there. But the nice thing about this is that um, if we have done primer first, and this is where we just need it, and this is where this, these containers came in really handy. I think if I didn't have a container and I was gonna do a ball again, I'd make one of these out of cardboard because this really keeps it stable. So now I'm just gonna letter, I'm just gonna prime it just like I would a letter. And see, I'm just doing, my, see how I'm curving my rounds, going up and over and down and this is this is a pretty good consistency actually and then I come back up and it's and it's flowing right over the top of those bumps very nicely this brush is getting down there this, this was a good choice for this project and see if it's not perfect with the primer I can make it perfect with the top coat um, you know, clean it up. But I do have a good solid uh, pattern to work with um, because of that uh, pounce powder. That pounce powder is really good. It's um, try to explain the, the consistency. It's not like super powdery. It's almost like a I don't know, almost like a damp flour. Uh, like like for baking, baking flour, you know, for, but it almost like that kind of, it's almost like got kind of that damp texture. So it really sticks really well and here's and builds a little tiny peak through the holes, but it also blows off, the excess blows off nicely. So that's, you know, a project like this, it pays to get <laughs> good, um, good quality, supplies and just because it's you, you you have a you have a lot cleaner um image to follow 
than if it was just a real light or messy or you know broken up kind of powdery looking image which is you know then you then you really then you really have to be on your a game and concentrating and focusing on all the positive and negative spaces to make sure you're going in the right direction the and the the uh, line widths are consistent with the others so in other words this width this width all these widths are consistent that's what we're looking at anyway even with a pa really nice pattern like this so coming up from the bottom i could swing around and get that and get that um bottom radius bottom and top radius And have and being um, getting our face. Well, it's, just, it's just a hair. Getting our face dead on center with the with where we're lettering is really helpful too, because that helps us keep our keep keep things straight. So I'm I'm looking at it. You know, like my nose is in the center of this bar that I'm painting right now. And the other nice thing about doing the primer is that, and you could do this with the top coat if you only wanted to do a top coat too and not do primer. But um, the nice thing about this, once this primer dries, I can clean the whole ball off really good. So I'd clean off all the excess powder because there's still a, there's still a, um, an edge of powder that's just kind of migrating away from the image itself, which leaves you with kind of like this, uh, kind of fuzzy or blurry at pl in, in certain spots. It's not, not, not all over the place, nor is it severe. It's just there. It's just kind of a little bit inconsistencies of white, like little specks, little specks of powder. Um, and then wipe, wiping the, the ball down, then I'll, all I'll have is the primer. And so when I do the top coat, the blue, I'll be able to um, really straighten things out and make it look as, as super clean as possible. And again, it goes back to brush skills and the, and the ability to see positive and negative spaces because that's, that's the whole ticket with making something look as accurate as we can at the, in the end. Um, And with this now, I mean this, they could do, they could really abuse this ball now with this, this, these kind of uh, materials on here if they really wanted to. Now I think they're going to try to, you know, not do that for the sake of emphasizing the product or emphasizing the logo. They're going to try to highlight it as much as they can um, in the video production, but. It, you know, if somebody drops it or, you know, something gets on it or whatever, something, anything can happen. That's probably why they have two balls. <laughs> I think he, he's always, every time he has me do something, he has me do two. Because <laughs> you never know, you know, you don't, it's smart too. I think that's the wise, wise thing is if it's, accidents can happen if, some, if somebody's handling an object that can get damaged or lost or dropped or whatever you just can't stop a production and say, oh, we got to call this guy and have him make another whatever and put another logo on it. So this is going on pretty good. It's going pretty fast. And the blue will go f probably just as fast, not a little faster. Because that's kind of the nature of top coats. Uh, primer is always usually slower because of viscosity, although I have reduced this quite a bit. So this actually is going on very quickly, in my humble opinion. Now I just would, I will do the lettering exactly the same way I would do any lettering. Be the reason beans is that it will follow, and I've cut the cups, yeah, see how I cut the cups so I can get a really good sharp chisel. I do that with all my lettering and cut. So I just start like I would do this in a lettering. Just come around. I'm just following the line. 
I'm following the line, but I'm also considering the shape of the, the line I'm doing. I'm, I'm not just like completely relying on the pattern. I'm, re, I'm relying on my, my eye to see, cons, to make sure it's consistent. Just like as if this was gonna be, this is like as if I was lettering on a, on a super flat, clean, slick surface. And just trying to ignore the bumps as best I can because you can always come back and fill in if you have to, but it's better to just start out following through. That's the critical thing. Instead of, instead of dabbing at it and try, to make, and try to fill it in like a coloring book, just follow through just like a regular letter because there's, uh, there's two things you'll be able to do. Number one, go back and fill in any voids. So like in this case, I'm, just gonna, I'm tucking it in to make a nice sharp upper left-hand point of the letter and then stopping short at the bottom and doing the same thing. So I'm kind of, you know how you shift over just slightly to make a nice clean point down at the corners? I'm doing that here just so, so, so I got ahead of the game. You can always fill in the voids later. And then second, we're going to uh, clean it up with our top coat. Yeah, I don't know if enough paint on there. Um, and then the other thing about this project is um, from a distance, this is going to look like it was pr printed on the printed on there. Um, you know, you, we don't have the advantage of having it embossed, inset into the ball. We're floating over the top of these little bumps, but when all said and done, I mean, the client said, even if you could just put something on there that'll just stick on that will just last long enough for <laughs> for. Uh, <clears throat> you know, some footage. And then if it falls off, you know, they can use the other one. I, I, and, but then he said, you know, we're also hoping to have a, somebody, you know, take a couple of shots in the basket. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you've already axed out the idea of just putting on a sticker. Because in my mind, that, that's it. I mean, if, you, if the person was just going to hold it, <laughs> and nothing, and do nothing else but just hold it, stand there. Do one thing, but if he's gonna shoot a basket, last thing you want is just both of these to, um, stickers to come off the ball. Then what do you do? Stop production, start over, waste of time. So I mean, this isn't gonna take that long, and I feel like it in the in the long run, it's just worth it. You see what I'm doing? Ooh, better turn it. Yeah, so we're cruising. Almost home. One little thing I wanted to mention is uh, one of the things I would I do in the case like this is have a Q-tip and some lacquer thinner. If I make a little smudge or get paint where I don't want it, then just taking this, flooding the tip of, a, of the uh, Q-tip, and then just spinning it in the fingers like that to make a nice sharp pencil type thing. You can come in and just push that paint into it, into itself. In fact, that's exactly what happened here with this O. I just, I had to, um, I had to push it right in there like that and that cleans it up. Okay, after just a few minutes in the sun, it's time for a isopropyl bath. all the excess powder off of there almost just comes off like that with the you see how vivid that looks right now that's before we get the blue down that gives it just a nice that gives us nice clean lines to work with and have any of that excess powder to throw us off now we can do a real clean uh, finish up okay it's time for the blue 
clean my brush out. As you can see, I did the first one already. Um, it turned out to be processed blue, a little bit of white, and a little bit of emerald green. And I whitened the processed blue. I said, whoop, that has got some green in it. So I think we got a, a close enough. So now this is where we get to kind of fix things up here, make it look clean as we can possibly do on a bumpy surface. And just follow the primer at the same time, cleaning up and try to make it a little bit more uniform. I messed up both sides of this bar, so I'm going to start with this side over here push the paint in towards it like that, get another clean spot, and do it again. I'm satisfied with that. Now I'm gonna take the other side of this Q-tip and do the same thing with the other side where I just messed it up uh, with a clean hand. Okay, I got blue all over that from my fingers, so I am going to get a, another clean, don't even try to do it with the dirty Q-tip. Make sure you have clean, there we go. And then I'm just gonna push that in like that. Voila, I'm in a clean side. And bingo, we're done. This is actually taking longer than I thought it was at, for a top coat. And I think one of the reasons why that is is that I'm trying to clean it up so that it's really super uniform. And I think that's why it's taken me longer, taking so long to do this top coat. Once I removed the um, powder, I noticed a lot of imperfections, just a little bit of, also voids that were, that I'm filling. <laughs> and it's not that easy to fill this. I thought it was gonna fill in easier, but it's, but it's not. I'm breaking my rules about having my face in front of this, but I wanted to point it to the camera. So I'm gonna make sure this is vertical. Okay, well, I'm just gonna keep doing this and I'll see you at the end of the video. Okay, both painted, done. So up close, you can see all the imperfections, how it rides over the bombs and make them real bumpy. And yeah, not like the Spalding logo where it's engraved. But it's not bad up close, but, he, but from far away, the farther you get away, the better it looks, like most things, right? Um, the other thing I realized is that I didn't have to do the, use the plotter for the pattern. I could have just printed out the size on a desktop printer, just like this, and then just pounce around that. But I just wanted to show you how I would how I use that system, especially for bigger projects, like if it was something, any, anything bigger than an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, <clears throat> like for a sign or something, that's the process I use. All right, well that does it for this project. I hope you enjoyed it and if you get a chance to do this, I hope the steps might have helped at least make it a little easier. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, happy painting.